All right, Maria, I am super excited to interview you for this piece. I couldn't think of anybody better when it comes to entrepreneurship. So thank you very much for coming. Thank you for having me. Spouse Magazine. Um, I appreciate you. Yeah. So in the spirit of it being about entrepreneurship, tell me what that means to you, what that word, does it define you? Is it, you know, part of who you are? I think so. I, I sometimes want to call myself a serial entrepreneur, um, trying different things. I've, I've, I've had jobs. I've had lots of different jobs, um, but I've always just felt more at home and kind of in my pocket when I've worked for myself because I've had more control of my time, of just how I do things, of whether or not I work um, and how much money I can make. Because when you, when I think about having a, if you want to call it nine to five kind of job, um, it just feels very confining. And especially with the life of a military spouse, I, I've got to be able to roll, got to be able to, to move and, and just do different things. So entrepreneurship was absolutely the key for me. I love that. And I kind of feel like that's who you were before you were a military spouse too. Can you kind of talk a little bit about, you know, your earlier life, if you will, before... <laughs> wearing that hat of military spouse. I do feel like I had a whole life before yeah. I became a military spouse. Um, actually, I, I started out as an entrepreneur. Um, I, I started out as a, a filmmaker um, in my early 20s doing, uh, I was a continuity supervisor and then moved into producer roles and then moved into director roles uh, when I met my husband. So it, you know, becoming a military spouse at that point was, it was very foreign to me. I had just like no idea what I was getting myself into. Um, and I thought at that time, it'll be easy. I'll be able to keep on doing what I'm doing. And, and, and just in changing those roles, it became very difficult. And with having small children, it was incredibly difficult to have a career in television production. So I'm not trying to sway people out of entrepreneurship. It just has to look different um, depending on everyone's situation. Your situation may be obviously very different, um, but at that time with small children and wanting to stay home and work less, I chose to leave being an entrepreneur and come back into the, uh, the workforce. Um, and it was really hard. People just do not want to give you opportunities as a military spouse, and they find really sneaky ways to, to ask, um, you know, so how long have you been here? What brings you to the area? You know, and, and you know exactly what they're asking for. It's like, yes, I'm a military spouse. We got here about six months ago. Probably going to be here about two and a half more years if that's what you're looking for. And that's that was always my, let's just cut to the chase. I'm going to give you the answer. And I felt very highly skilled coming from having been an entrepreneur. And it almost like didn't even matter what your skill set was. The fact that you were a military spouse just already was like, you know, put on those, the blocks. So having been an entrepreneur pretty much most of my life, um, it was an easy switch getting out of the workforce again and coming back into being an entrepreneur. Did I answer your question? Not no, so sure. Totally. You absolutely did. Um, and everything you said, I think hits on some important points. You're not telling military spouses who are going to watch this or read the article later, not to pursue their dreams. It almost sounds like if I'm reflecting back properly, they have to shift expectations and they have to pivot. And I think that's like the soul of what an entrepreneur is, right? It's not this like perfectly balanced plate that looks cute and pretty all the time, right? <laughs> oh man, I'm so glad that you said that. Cause if you, if you talk about that perfectly balanced plate, oh no, mine's got spaghetti off the side and there's probably something over on the wall. Entrepreneurship is just this giant blast and you've got to figure out at that moment, where am I going to go? What am I going to do? And COVID was a huge shift and change to what many entrepreneurs had to do. But that's what I think makes a good entrepreneur is going, all right, it's not going to work this way. W what else do I do? And when I was a teacher, so I was a high school computer science teacher, if you can believe that. And it was a lot of fun. I love the kids. I really love working with the students um, and teaching them coding skills. But, but uh, computer science is really problem solving. And kids would come to me all the time with the code doesn't work. It's not working. I hate this class. I'm like, no, it, you don't hate this class. You just hate that you can't figure it out right now. So shift, 
look at the code again, maybe walk away, come back, look at the code again and think differently. And you would hear them, they'd be at their desk and all of a sudden I'd be at my desk and I'd hear, I got it, it worked because they found a way to do it. And I said, failure is not necessarily a bad thing. And I don't really like the word failure, but what you figured out was a way how not to do something, do it differently. And so that, that I think is that, like I said, at the soul of entrepreneurship is figuring out how to do things differently. But as military spouses, isn't that the soul of military spouse? Mm -hmm. We become chameleons. We're We're meant to be, I think, entrepreneurs with you know, the different things that you have to balance, the constant change, Mm -hmm. you know, um, how did that, because you you end up, you ended up going back into production, right? Mm -hmm. And making the decision to start a show. How did your experiences as a military spouse shape how you approach that new venture? Um, As a military spouse going into, or or coming back into production, um, I don't want to say that it made it easy, but it, it just gave me this different outlook. Production, I knew. I was a filmmaker for over 20 years, 25 years, date myself. And I knew that side of it. But coming in now, trying to create a TV series to support military families, I had to take my experience as a military spouse, as you know, part of a military family and go, how would we do it differently than Hollywood does it? And I hear it all the time from the families that we help. We're letting you in because you're one of us. If you were Hollywood, we no, we wouldn't have this. There's a level of trust. There's a level of of connection because I'm I'm what Hollywood does like to call a credible insider. I am inside this circle of trust, so it 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 changes the dynamic. And I think because I live the life, I'm able to help military families convert, create, enhance their homes because I. I have the same struggles. I feel the same things that they do. So that was sort of that shift. And I had to marry those two things together. What I knew about television production and being a military family and put those things to create a show that no one else had done. Um, And it was tricky and it still is tricky. It's not, it's not an easy road to go down. Um, You know, we're we're, we're doing our best. What made you decide on design? You could have done any kind of show, right? Your yes. heart was in production and correct me if I'm wrong, but your career in production was very varied with what you did and the, t- the types of film you did. So why did you go into design? Why design? Uh, I thought that design was a way to start conversations. What I'm really at the heart of getting is the story of the military family, the story of what makes them who they are and every story is different. I'm a storyteller. I want to know their story and design gives me that opportunity to be able to connect with them at that sort of conversation, coffee table level. Let's just sit and chat and talk and there's no like, oh, I'm gonna be on TV, like this is so weird. No, we're just gonna have a conversation. And then on the other side, after we, we get to know the family, we share their story, we do get to give them something that most military families don't do that they they look past because oh, you know I'm only going to be here two years why bother why am I going to paint why am I going to put a curtains who cares but the fact is you need to care because you are there this is where you're making memories where you're raising your children where you you're having your family for however long it is six months ten years you know what I mean so make this home what you want it to be as close as you can for the amount of time that you're there, because it's really important to be happy in your home. We've got enough stresses, right? COVID, yeah, homeschool, all the things. And to be in a place where you feel at peace, you love your surroundings, it really changes your your mental perspective. It changes your well, well-being. So that was the reason why we wanted to do it. Uh, and it's, I mean, your home is your sanctuary, right? It's that one space that, yeah, all this craziness is going on. Kids are trying to adjust. We're trying to be resilient, but no matter what, that is a place you can gather. Absolutely. And it's a place where you can reintegrate. So think about how military families oftentimes are apart for you know months at a time, even years at a time. And when you come back together, you want a place that you love that you feel at peace with to reintegrate and reconnect with your family. So I think it's really important to have that. 
And so the other thing that I know about you that maybe our viewers and readers don't is that you are actually a Cuban immigrant. I am. I was I was born in Cuba and my family came here. Um, uh, it was a very tumultuous time when they came. Um, you know, Castro had taken over Cuba. Um, it was it, people were losing so much. My my family was you know in hiding, if you will, um, and luckily was able to get out of the country um, with. And, and a lot of people I don't share this story with. Uh, when they were at the airport, so my my father had to go through a lottery system. So by raising your hand and saying that you wanted to leave the country, you actually let the government know that you were against government policy because you didn't want to be there. So that that just like put a target on my family. I go, oh, we know, and we're not. You know, they just took everything away. But my father is such a patriot and wanted to come to America and give his children the American dream. He's like, I don't care. I will do whatever it takes to get my family out of here. And uh, he's at the airport now, I'm 18 months old. So I don't really have a memory of this. Um, but my sister was a little bit older. She told me about it. And um, they made my parents leave everything. The little suitcases that they have had, they had to leave them. They had to strip all their clothes off. My mom was in her undergarments, my dad in her in his undergarments. Um, I was in a diaper, my sister, I mean, imagine this, my sister's like 15 years old and she's, what is going on um, to humiliate the family? Um, and then the last moment of trying to get my mother's wedding ring off, they're like, you gotta leave it, you can't take it. Uh, luckily they couldn't get it off and the plane was gonna leave. So they just let them go. And um, it makes me cry, sorry, because it was such a powerful moment. Um, to understand freedom. When the plane landed, my dad was just, you know, think about it in his underwear, but so happy. He's like, I am in America and I have my family here. Life will be different for them. So I thank my parents every single day, every single day. We should treasure, treasure our freedom. So sorry. You got me crying, Jessica. I knew I was going to cry heck? about that story too, oh. because, you know, that's really the heart oh. of, of everything. You know, when, when you think back to, we all have these threads in our life, right? And these puzzle pieces and how events led up to who we became today. You know, your father hadn't had that conviction, mm -hmm. had that strength. What would your life look like? Would you be here? You know, there's just, there's so many unanswered questions. It, al it almost feels like, because of all you've experienced and what your family went through and now being a military spouse, it's like, I'm going to do for others. I'm going yes. to, you know, be that. Cause that's what being a citizen of this country is all about. Right. Absolutely. Knowing, knowing how much freedom meant to my family, this, you know, the power of the American dream. So my dad sits back and looks at all of his children. We are all entrepreneurs. Every single one of us, we've gone into business for ourselves and we've never taken no for an answer. And I, I say this to uh, you know anyone trying to start a business. I say this to military spouses, just because someone tells you no, doesn't mean it's over. No is just a no right now. Okay, what's that uh, Ariana Grande song? Thank you, next. Okay, you've got to get really strong and resilient and say, it's not you, it's, and move on and you got to keep going forward because if you take the nose to heart it's crushing it is crushing you feel like oh i can't do this forget it forget if i were to give up after every no no i wouldn't be doing this i hear no 100 times a day easily and that's okay it's on them not me i know what we're doing i know that what we're doing matters and that we need to keep moving forward and i think that being an immigrant has given me that fire to do that. And one thing that I learned in this process, being a Latino in media, is that there's very few of us. There's not many. We think that, that, that there are a lot, but they're not. And in home improvement, in that very specific sector, there's zero. There's nobody in television doing that. So we took all those things that we learned and said, okay, but we are, we're going to do it. And, and even when I presented the whole idea, the very first time, the very first thing I know, I heard was no, 
you're not going to do it. It's great. It's nice, but you don't have the money. You don't have, you don't have the staff. You don't have the, the ability. You just, you can't. Can't is, can't is fuel to me. Okay. Let, let's see how we can't. So, and here we are. I think that's important, you know, especially those who follow you and watch the show, they see it's shiny, it's pretty, it's gorgeous. What you guys are able to accomplish is amazing, but I've been privy to seeing you fall asleep and paint, you know? So, you know, maybe I wasn't there like in the beginning years, but just thinking about the progress and that what you said makes so much sense. So much of the successful business owners that we see, whoever it is, they invented this, they invented that. If you do the research, they failed a lot and it shouldn't be a scary word. It, it really shouldn't, yeah. you know, it's, it's a lesson learned. It's a way to get better. Um, yes. so what would you tell Take that? it as growth. Yeah. What would you tell that Maria Reed four years ago when you started moving with the military? Um, or five years wow. ago, five or four, four, four. Oh, and wow. Uh, Go harder, go stronger. Um, you know, don't look back. Run your race because when we're running, sometimes we do this and try to see what what other. Don't worry about it. Do you? There is no one like you. Yes, there may be other people doing similar things. McDonald's and Burger King they coexist. Walmart and Target they coexist. Businesses coexist, and that's great. That's wonderful. That's healthy. Don't worry about what anyone else is going to do or is doing. And number one, don't listen to the chatter. That would be the number one thing I would tell my four year ago self is don't listen to what other people are going to say, because sadly, we're in a world of a lot of smack talk. And because of social media, I think it's given people this or they think they have this superpower and I can say what I want to say. I can. I can do what I want to do because I'm protected by a screen. And that is completely false. It, it is ridiculous. And I say to those, I have no problem saying this, those who do it, stop, stop. That does not get us anywhere. We need to be kind to people, accept what other people are doing, enjoy what they're doing, say, great, good for you, go on. But to sit there and talk, Smack about someone else, what that is just showing me is, wow, it's really sad on you. You must not be okay with yourself to have to do something like that. So if, I guess that's the number one thing I would say is don't listen to the chatter because that's all it is. It's just noise. That's a good advice for everyone. And I think the other thing to point out, just because I know you, is that, and this is probably true of a lot of entrepreneurs, advice that you would give, don't try to do everything alone. Oh, why? girl. Why, why, why? Like, you know, the, why? Number one, it's not fun, you know, <laughs> bring your friends. But what would you say about collaboration in this space of entrepreneurship? Ugh. Collaboration over competition every day. It is impossible. It is impossible to do everything. And sometimes when you're getting started, you have to. You have to, because you're you're trying to get the, the the funds that you need. You're trying to figure it out, and that's okay. You know, we've we've got it. We've got to be able to work through it. But when you associate yourself with others, with mentors, immediately get a mentor. Get someone who knows what they're doing to talk to. Doesn't mean that you want them in your business. You're bringing them on board. You're going to pay them salary. People who are successful in business want to help other people. Good entrepreneurs want to help other people and they want to share their knowledge. So I will put this out there. Anyone who would like a mentor, I'm happy to help you. I'm happy to, to be your sounding board. I'm happy to listen because maybe sometimes that's all we need is just to talk it through and go, oh, oh this is what's happening. Okay. I got this. So having a mentor, having someone that you can share things with, and then bringing people that you, that you can trust that you know, uh, have your back, whether you're in business or not. You know what I mean? That they're, that they're your friends. That is really important because entrepreneurship is a very lonely or can be a very lonely road. Um, not everyone understands that. Your family may not understand that. I love my husband dearly. He's an army guy. He's so used to army, army, army. Entrepreneurship to him is odd. He's like, what do you mean? What do you mean? What are we doing? You know, how are we doing this? When, when I left teaching, I just said one day, I'm done. 
I'm done. Finish the year. And then I had no other source of income. There wasn't going to be a, a paycheck coming. So, you know, it, it was scary. But to have that mindset to know it's going to be okay. Bring others that will help you. And I think you said this quote once, uh, Jessica, I want to be in a room with people who are smarter than I am. People who know more than I am, than I do. Absolutely. Because you're learning from them. You're going to learn. And it's super important. Hey, Ms. Ray. Do you, you want to be Bell? Is that what's happening? <laughs> Okay, mama can't do that right now, but if you give me five minutes, I can. How's that? Here, do you want to play with my phone? Yeah, well, that's stretch for 15 minutes. Here you go, boo. I can't do that right now, but you can take this and you can go watch whatever you want. Do you want to watch Limby? Five minutes, Ray. Limby or Peppa Pig? My gosh, I love her voice. It's the greatest okay. thing ever. If I had to do an animated series, I would use her voice. Love that child. No, she's sweet. She did pretty good. Yeah. Um, no, everything you said completely, because I think that's a mentality shift that definitely has to happen. If you're going to go into entrepreneurship, you don't know everything. You don't. Nope. That's okay. Um, and that's okay. okay. You don't have to know everything. And I say this to people a lot. Um, we should all be continual learners. And I mean, I'm just going to use myself as an example. I have a master's in social work. I'm a social worker, but it doesn't end there. For me to maintain my license, I have to have so many credits. Every single year, I have to continue learning. And so I kind yep. of equate that to what you're doing and, you know, advising other people is take the ego out of it. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's all about you because what, what you have or what you're doing is a greater picture. I think entrepreneurs become entrepreneurs because they want to solve a problem. They want, they want to create something, make an app. Uh, build a new product, uh, create a new service. They, they want to solve a problem. So we have to learn constantly staying on it. Even as when I was a computer science teacher, I constantly had to learn code. And that's an ever changing industry. And I kept having to learn and learn and learn. But, but because it made me learn so much, I think it just ingrained that in me. I've got to stay on it. And the same with media, it is changing. Look at what COVID has done to the television industry. It is completely different. It has disrupted the industry. And I think it's disrupted it in a good way because there's so much opportunity to be able to create, to be creative, to share stories. Uh, people are consuming content far faster than ever in history. We can't keep up with making the content for people to consume it. So if anyone's trying to get into that industry, I highly encourage it, learn learn and then do the things become what it is that you want to be no one else is going to do it for you it's, okay here you go you just have to turn it sideways i wanted to share something with you when when oh there you go there you go <laughs> actually i'm gonna move so she stops interrupting because i think this is going to be a repetitive thing and I'm sure Dan's gonna watch this video and laugh as they're editing it. But I'm hey Dan, to... hey Dan. Uh, uh, the bathroom's the best. And they... There we go. I'm just gonna. This is my spot. Can I just go right there. Yeah. Um, In case you guys are wondering, at the magazine, this is my bathroom. This is my tub. But we're gonna continue. Go right there. Okay. Um, one one of the things I did want to share with you is is becoming an entrepreneur as a military spouse has given me a great opportunity to give work and create work for other military spouses and veterans and civilians. So I love that we are a community of just on, on our show, on our staff, our producers, a military spouse, our, uh, one of our cameramen is a military kid. Um, and then our other cameraman is uh, a civilian. We're just working now with uh, strategists and their military spouses and their team as military spouses. And I'm like, I love being able to look within our community to create work, 
create uh, opportunities for other people and then as well as look outside so that when we bring in that civilian community to work with us, they're usually in awe. They're like, what? This, this is military life? They had no idea. So when we bring them on, they're usually just like, wow, super impressed and, and just even more supportive than they ever were before. Yeah, definitely. I completely agree with all that. And it's, I think, you know, the public has this perception of what this life is like, right? Oh, yeah. We wake up saying the Pledge of Allegiance before we put our feet on the ground. You know, it's just it, their vision of what a military family is like is not based on reality, you know? Yeah. Um, but I would say the heart, the heart of the military family is serving, right? Yeah. And, you know, you being an entrepreneur, you don't just, okay, I went into business. This is great. I'm able to provide for my family. I'm doing what I love. It's more than that. Yeah, it is much more than that. And when you said provide for your family, the, the first three years of doing this, I, I wasn't making a paycheck. And that is a hard uh, lesson that some entrepreneurs need to learn. You are always, if you want it to be successful, you're putting back and that's hard. We spent our entire life savings creating this series. But the reason we did that is because at the core, we believe in the military family. We believe in service. We believe in giving back. And we knew that something had to be done. Something had to, to give, to help. Because it's more, and I say it all the time, it's more than a makeover series. It's what happens while we're making that series, the connections that are being made, the community that's being built, the lifelong friendships. I'm friends with just about everybody we've done a makeover for. And you know, we're always reaching out to each other. Hey, you guys good, everything is good. And we're trying to keep those connections open because you never know where, you know, where someone is, what they're feeling, what they're doing. Um, and, and just building those relationships is really important to us. And I bet you, you never thought about the ripple effect that you serving these military families would have and yeah. how many of them would turn around and become volunteers and, you know, join in on makeovers or, you know, say, Hey, use me because they want to pay that forward. It's, it, you know, you hit the nail on the head because we, we didn't know going into it, what would happen. And every time we do a makeover afterwards, either the family that we helped or those extended members of their family or their friends, we will get messages every day. Hey, I saw what you did. That's so powerful. How can I help? What can I do? We have businesses constantly reaching out. Hey, can I help you? And it's not for, and so many say, we don't want any credit. You don't have to put our name on there. We just want to know that we did something to help, to help out. And that's so special. That's so important. So, you know, looking into 2021, we have even more makeovers that we're going to do. We have even bigger plans, a little secret that you know that I can't uh, share yet, but just so much that we want to do to be able to give back to the community and to show others you can do it. Volunteering is important because when you give back, it changes who you are. Like I said, that ripple effect, you realize that doing good is good. Being the good in the world is good. And that is what we need to do. We need to, we need to stop being ugly toward each other. We need to be able to sit at the table. I say it often. We can agree to disagree. We don't have to have the same opinions. And that's okay. But we don't need to fight about it or be ugly about it. We need to figure out ways to work together, to give to our community, to help those in need, to just be a better people. Mm -hmm. So with moving with the military, you're doing 5,000 million things, you know, <laughs> in business. It doesn't just stop at one thing. You're, you're doing several Total. different things. Makeovers, um, you're doing production for other companies that come in, you know, and, and yep. want to use your mad skills. You're also a nonprofit that you are a part of, and I'm a part of, I'm not going to lie. Um, yep, yep. And that's been a learning experience in itself. I think both of us can say that, right? Because you, you did yep. this for four years and- you know, you, you know what that took and then jumping into this next thing, what would you say is the difference? Because I know there are entrepreneurs out there that maybe are weighing, you know, what they want to do. And a lot are going into the nonprofit space. What's your advice on that side? Um, one of the greatest gifts I've ever been given was meeting you. 
you are an incredible human being. <laughs> Love you. And, and of course, Sam and Stacy. And I, th I think that that just melding of the minds coming together, you know, creating this nonprofit, which is the Inspire Up Foundation. Um, it's probably one of the greatest things I've ever done. Um, it's hard work. It's not easy. When we started it, we started it during COVID. Who starts a business during COVID? Yes, we do. We do. Let's do this. But it was because there's never a perfect time. If you're waiting for that perfect time to start something, it's never going to happen. Just know that going in. But we knew that we needed to do something that, that we needed to affect change, that we needed to be able to help people. And four of us working together is a whole lot easier than one of us trying to do it. Um, so I just think that, you know, working as a team and putting it together, putting it out there, making it a reality was, was beautiful. Is it work? Of course it is. Um, do we all agree all the time? No, we don't. And that's okay. We don't have to agree, but we figure out ways to work together. And that's what I think entrepreneurship and business is. Um, I say it often and, you know, not hating on anyone who has a nonprofit, but nonprofit simply means a tax status. It's still a business. You've got to figure out how are you going to bring in revenue? What are you going to do with the revenue that, that you have? How are you going to affect change and make a difference in the world? Um, it's not just about you know, bringing in the dollars, but, but it is. You, you, it is that you have to bring in money in order to do the work. No money, how do you do it? How do you help people without that? Um, I know at the end of the year, it's a, it's a big tax difference on how it looks on paper, but still, you're, you're still doing the same thing. Um, I just believe, I believe in you. I believe in our team and I believe in our mission. Uh, so it never feels like work. That always feels like passion. And if you're passionate about what you do, it doesn't feel like you'll ever work a day in your life. Agreed. Do something. My motto is always do something always that you don't dread a Monday. Mm -hmm. Right. You should look forward to those yep. Mondays. Like you had your refreshing weekend and now it's like, I get to do what I love. So what would be your final piece of advice for viewers and readers about your story? You know, what, what you hope they take from it. You know, we're big on call to action. Always. <laughs> be passionate. Don't go into something. Number one, don't go into something because you think you're going to make money. That's the worst reason to get into business. If, if it's about that, you're going about it the wrong way. Go into business and do something because you're passionate about it. You want to make a change. You want to do something different. You want to create something that hasn't been done before, solve a problem. That's why you go into business. There's a saying from a movie, if you build it, they will, it, if you build it, they will come. Um, there's truth to that, but there's a lot of hard work to that. You can't just build it and go, and I did that and walk away. No, no, there's a lot of work. But that work, when you're passionate about it, it never feels like work. I, I have 18, 22, 24, you've been there, 48 hour days with no sleep, but it never felt tiring. It never, I never felt like I can't do this. Yeah, I was a little tired a little bit, you know, but, but you keep moving forward because you know you know that what you're doing is a good thing. So first and foremost, make sure you're passionate about it. Your heart is in it for the right reasons and not the wrong reasons. Um, don't listen to the naysayers because there's gonna be a lot of them. You'll hear no and that's okay. Keep moving forward, believe in yourself. You know that there will be breakthroughs. This, our word for 2021, I don't know if anybody else does that, but our word for 2021 is thrive. We're not just going to be doing the things, but we're going to be thriving in all of the things that we're doing. And we're going to be lifting up those around us. Don't be a tyrant. Don't be ugly to the people that work with you because you need them. You need them. So always be cognizant of others' feelings, of others' time, um, and, and give yourself grace. That's always been the hardest thing for me. I am the hardest on myself. And I'm learning this year to give myself grace and that it's okay to say no. That's, that's been the difficult for me. Intentional yes, my friend, the intentional yes. Yeah, intentional yes. Instead of the, uh, you feel uh, obligatory. 
Yes. Intentional. Yes. Uh, yes. I can be a part of that. And there's just because you say no, doesn't make you bad. You know what I mean? You got to think about yourself. You know, I went into the hospital earlier this or last year. I don't even remember when it was, but I worked myself so hard trying to be everything to everyone and everything. And I learned that I can't do that and that I do have to take care of myself. And by taking care of myself, I am taking care of others far more. So the, you know, the bit of advice I give you is, you know, manage your time, love what you do, love those around you um, and believe in yourself. Because if you don't believe in yourself, why would anybody else? Mm, powerful stuff. Um, do you have anything that I did not ask you that you want to include? Uh, sure. For- Total social shameless plug. Do it. Follow. Yes. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook at moving with the military. We're also on YouTube and Pinterest. If you want to catch all of the episodes that we've ever done, they're all on Farm and Ranch TV, which is available on Apple TV, Roku, and Amazon Fire. And then some big news coming very soon with some new partners that we'll be working with. So we are just, uh, we want everybody to be able to follow. Yes, you don't even know the things. I want to surprise you too. Um, just some great things happening. And we just want to continue to spread the good news and um, be the good in the world. You know, be better than we were yesterday. Make someone happy today and every day. So thank you for giving me the opportunity to share what we do and, uh, and spread a little joy and for being my friend. Thank you. Oh, love your face.